Hello and welcome to the Caymanas Park Highlight Show. In this week's edition, we recap the race card from Saturday, February 17. Nine races were on offer, including the Race 7 feature event, the Reggae Month Trophy. Let's begin with Race 1. This was a maiden condition event for native bred three year olds, set to go a distance of 1,000 meters round or five furlongs. A field of seven declared to start. Bold Shadow from the Patrick Lynch barn was looking to shake off the maiden tie. They're off for the first. Roman Princess, the one that lags at the back early. The Soul Warrior and a Ruby's Light now match strides up front as they make their way toward the final half of a mile. They're just about to go spinning into that turn, and the Soul Warrior on the rail holds that lead. Mac and Room out wide. Ruby's Light tucked neatly in between horses. A Roman Princess has made good ground, and they form a line of four as they leave the three. Bold Shadow races two lengths back, the favorite, King's Crown running the rail, and a long way last to Shelley the Rocket at the back and hopeless at the moment as they come thundering into the top of the lane. They leave the quarter pole behind, they're fanning out right across the track, Mac and Rome in the green, battles the Soul Warrior. Here down on the rail, King's Crown now looking for room, it has been taken and has to be switched as they drive up toward the furlong pole, the Soul Warrior on the rail. Here is King's Crown now finding room between horses, Mac and Rome forming the line of three and the winner will come from one of these and now King's Crown and terrific Tevin Foster hit the front and quickly slip away by more than a length. King's Crown takes the first easily in the end. Mac and Rome is second. The Soul Warrior is third. Bold Shadow has finished in fourth, racing back in fifth. That's Roman Princess. Birds were right and King's Crown at one to five uh, finds a way through and gets the job done. And I tell you, sometimes the mark a bit and I say, well, one to five favorite. I have four horses in the race, so the one, four, five, and six, you know. And I said, well, all right. Everybody said King's Crown gonna win, but how about Mac and Rome? 12 to one, that would have been a great start for the Reggae Six. But one to five favorite came through. Ah, I tell you. Well, sometimes, you see. <laughs> and another time you get bank at the one to five, and him lose, but kudos. Got to the connections here of King's Crown, who I win first time at the races is always an owner's dream come through. The one to five favorite King's Crown opens her account with a well fashioned run on debut, taking the days first with jockey Tevin Foster in the saddle for trainer Stephen Todd covering the distance in one minute three and four fifths of a second. Race two on the Saturday card was an optional claiming event for three year olds and up going a short distance of 800 meters or four furlongs. A small field of six further reduced to five with a scratch of Silverstein from the one box. There was a lot of stable confidence reflected in the betting for the three horse, Sensational Satin. They're off and racing. Chinese music breaks winging on the far side. Right in the middle, that Sensational Satin tacking across to meet up with Sabina closest to us. Friend of the family comes next, and then comes the Tequila Blue. They're spread right across the track, though, coming out of the chute and coming to the uh, two furlong point. Tiny music over on the far side. Sensational Satin is quite prominent, along with Sabina. Just behind them, that is Tequila Blue. Friend of the family left out of it, but tacking right over on the near side. That is Tiny music. Could just have the overall lead. It's Tiny music chased by Sabina and the company. Here comes Sensational Satin on the far side. Tequila Blue gets rolling. It is friend. It says still in front, making the running Chiny music. But here comes Sabina, and Sabina has it the front. Sabina and Trevor Simpson Odi landing the second from Tequila Blue. Then comes Chiny music and Sensational Satin. Friend of the family is fifth. So that's a former five-time champion jockey Trevor Slicer Simpson Odi, also known as Slice Bread. Took that Slicer Simpson getting the job done there about Sabina, and what a difference a jockey makes. Because when I saw that race a while ago. The horses switching all over the place. Chinese music came come from down the inside, coming across toward the stand side. We also had Tequila Blue coming over slightly, and there was Sensation Saturday who came right across as well. But uh, Slicer didn't lose his cool, picked a path between horses, came forward with a well timed run, and got the victory by a length. And that's a difference that a world class jockey makes. Sabina getting home by a length there as your four to five favorite. Another good win by the six-year-old mayor Sabina, who is trained and conditioned by Owen E. Sharp, who is also co-owner with the Supreme Ventures Racing and Entertainment Limited chairman Solomon Sharp. Race 3 was an optional claiming event for three-year-olds and up, 
This was a seven and a half furlongs trip. Trainer Stephen Todd was looking for a second win on the Saturday card with his two to five bet secret traveler under the mount of Radish Roman. Well, they're off. First start. K Boy comes away running quickly with Secret Traveler between runners. Casual Peach is near the rail, Wilson right on their heels. Crimson Race is just off the fractions, and a Colorado Ranger at the back of the field. They make their way now, just about to flash past the six. They're tightly bunched up front, the first three. Wilson down on the rail, possibly adjust that leader. Casual Peach on the outside in the green. Secret Traveler has made good progress. K-Boy is there. Maybe a length and a half separates the first four as they leave the five. Uh, these are chased up by Crimson, the red, and last of all remains Colorado Ranger on the run down the back stretch. They're about to arrive at the half mile. And still we have a battle up front. Casual Peach emerges, just the leader. Secret Traveler breathing down the neck of that leader. A head separates them now, maybe a nose. As they charge toward the three, Wilson hot on their heels and making ground, finding room on the rail. K-Boy has backed out into fourth spot. Crimson has work to do now, being shuffled up by the rider, and Colorado Ranger begins to draw closer. It's still a wide-open affair as they come thundering into the top of the lane. They're at the quarter pole, and toward the far side in the green, that is a Wilson. There goes K-Boy right over against the rail. Secret Traveler in the center and now Crimson bursts through the pack and Crimson the red and white now takes charge. It is Crimson out in front beginning to draw clear. A furlong to run. Can they catch Crimson under a bustling ride from Baby to Harvey and Crimson pouring it on. Crimson comes right away from them and will win comfortably and easily in the end. He's down. Brake lights coming on. Wins by maybe 10. Close between Colorado Ranger Secret Traveler. Wilson has finished in fourth. Impressive victory there by Crimson. The back class of Crimson uh, really told there today. Won by some 11 and a half lengths, 11 and a quarter lengths. And that was uh, being geared down inside the final half for them. Maybe Darby riding there for Warren Matty. Big win by Crimson. The longest shot on the board, Colorado Ranger at 44 to 1. Completes the exact term. The exact return, 3,384. So you get the 75 second favorite winning over the longest shot. And a big dividend there for the exact players. A commanding victory for jockey Bobito Harvey aboard the 7 to 5 favorite Crimson, who outclassed the field with a win margin of 11 and a quarter long lengths, stopping the clock at 1 minute 36 and 4 fifths of a second over the 1500 meters course. Race number 4 was another optional claiming event for 3 year olds and up, a 5.5 furlong strip or 1100 meters. Eight horses declared to start, with unruly boss from the one bots getting the nod as a favorite from the punters. They're off on racing, that was a good line. I would spell at the back though is a Baton Rouge, but making the runnings KP Choice right there on the outside Catawba, right against the rail that is on Ruli Boss. Then comes Bugatti behind Bugatti that is Magical Mood. Prince Marshall comes next, and the trailing pair of Gone and the Grill and uh, Baton Rouge. They head towards the uh, three furlong point, and it is KP Choice bouncing on a two length lead from Catawba chasing in second. Here comes on the outside Bugatti making progress right against the rail. That is uh, Unruly Boss right there, too. That's Magical Mood there at the top of the lane, and KP Choice kicks once again. Catawba on the outside is also coming on. Here comes Bugatti in the middle, right against the rail. That's unruly, dude, but it's KP Choice in front doing the better work of the It's KP Choice in front also coming on. That's unruly, boss, but it's KP Choice in front and begins to pull out of the It's KP Choice pulling away from them in the end. KP Choice and Robert Hallidine gear down in the end and win by about six. Unruly boss is second. Cut tight for third. Could be Bugatti just ahead of... Problems there for the top choice, KP Choice. Robert Haldine riding for Ricardo Brown, and KP Choice delivers what was expected. A convincing victory and went off at 8 to 5. Actually, went off the second choice in the betting as uh, on Rudy Boss number one came in for all the support. Went off as the 7 to 5 favorite, and the top two choices in the betting were 1 2, and the exact return 580. So that's another example where you get the two favorites and you get a big payout in the exact come. The Conan Plus is about $290 in dividends there. Convincing victory for. KP Choice. Two consecutive wins now for the Ricardo Brown conditioned KP Choice, ousting the field and taking them from gate to wire with a well timed ride from the jockey Robert Halladin. The favorite and Ruli Boss had to settle for second spot. Race 5 was a maiden condition event for native bred five year olds and up, 
A six furlongs race with a modest field of seven declared to face a starter. Trainer Linton Calder had a double entry in So Magnificent and Crafty Zelazine from the one and seven bots respectively. And sent off, getting off slow. That's So Magnificent along with King Rick and driven along last to Ra, trying to make amends after the poor start. Excuse me, goodbye, joined already by Edina Mar. So Ganga Jamuna right there looking for room in between them as they leave the five and run toward the half mile. Crafty Zelazine is racing in fourth, five or six off that lead. So Magnificent now beginning to make mild progress on the rail. King Rick toward the back and the last hurrah is last. They come flashing past the 716th. They're in the turn for home. As soon me, goodbye. The rider lets out a notch. They go on by three parts of a length from the favorite Edina Mar stalking. So Ganga Jamuna races a further two lengths in behind them. Crafty Zelazi needs to find maybe six. So Magnificent in the red race is next, and toward the back, King Rick and Last Hurrah. They share last as Adina Marsh has now kicked at the top of the lane and taken charge. It's Adina Marsh coming away from them as they arrive at the final 316th. A crack of the right-hand stick, and it's Adina Marsh and terrific Tevin Foster. He's looking for a double on the card. They race past the furlong pole, and it is all Adina Marsh in comp Complete control arriving inside the final 16th. Edina Marsh is running away from them. So Ganga Jamuna in a battle with Crafty Zelazine, but it's all over. Edina Marsh wins easily in the end over Sir Ganga Jamuna. Then Crafty Zelazine, so magnificent, King Rick is fifth. No problems there for Edina Marsh after finishing second behind Anika Bell, her stablemate who returned to win. Stepping up in class at nones of two for the first time at 49 to 1, upsetting the Apocar that day. It was Edina Marsh's turn today. And uh, Judy got the job done, convincing by six and a half lengths. Double for Tevin Foster. And a great training job by Lydia Anglin, more popular known as Sharon. And I'm really proud of Sharon there. I have banked Edina Marsh on my exotics, banked it on my regular six, banked it on my catch nine, and banked Edina Marsh on my two and six. And I tell you, it really happens when you bank a horse on all three of your big tickets and it wins so kudos to Sharon there and getting Adina Mars to win and uh, just a little bit of inside information for you my mother's name is Sharon Sharon Kane she celebrated her birthday yesterday so a very happy belated birthday to mom and uh, I know for sure it's a 99 to 1 chance that she's watching she doesn't have any interest at all in horse racing has never and she will never uh, she just doesn't follow the sport but anyway uh, if somebody knows her that is watching now, they might well tell her that I said happy birthday today on the show. So happy birthday, mom, celebrated, celebrated her birthday yesterday. And uh, Sharon. Newly licensed female trainer, Lydia Anglin, who is also the owner of the five-year-old mayor, Edna Marsh, slowly making her presence known with a third win at Kimanas Park since completing her studies and gaining her certification. It's now time for a break on the Kimanas Highlight Show. On the other side, we'll recap remaining races on the card from Saturday. February 17. Welcome back to the Kimanas Highlight Show. We pick up our race recap from number six. This was a restricted allowance event going five furlongs straight. A 10 horse field declared to start. Six time champion jockey Omar Walker replacing the saddle by Christopher Douglas. Aboard the Aerosobrati conditioned Bernard the Quick. They're off and racing. Speedy here gets a flyer. Also, there that's Fly Blue Jet in the middle. Right there to that City Hawk over toward the far side and tacking across. That's Oasis Jack. Close to us and traveling nicely. That's Bazinga right on the defense. Uncle Nub is also in the mix. So it's Bazinga, Uncle Nub right in the middle. Speedy here over on the far side. Oasis Jack right there to that's Fly Blue Jet. Also in on the premises that is a City Hawk as they come out of the chute and head towards the two furlong point on the course and Oasis Jack charting the course on the far side closest to us Bazinga Speedy here is right there too along with Fly Blue Jet it's a wide open affair Speedy here Fly Blue Jet and and Bazinga is also coming on the Prince Bazinga Speedy here it's Bazinga Speedy here and Fly Blue Jet Smart Asset is also coming on the premises it's a mad rush to the line as now Fly Blue Jet is the front smart asset finding foot and smart asset could have beaten them all from Fly Blue Jet. Then comes Savvy Girl running on Bazinga and it got tied for fifth.
Smart Asset uh, delivers a win over the five furlong straight distance, and that's Smart Asset's third win from four career starts. First two wins came over four furlong straight. Went around the bend, beat by Desert of Malibu. Nothing of the caliber of Desert of Malibu present here today. Misses the break, runs into some traffic problem, and still runs on and wins. So a brief effort there by uh, the winner, Smart Asset and jockey Matthew Bennett. A fight down to the wire, but when the dust cleared, it was Smart Asset with jockey Matthew Bennett aboard that was the smartest of the top five, beating the likes of Fly Blue Jet, Savvy Girl, Bazinga, and the not so fast Speedy here, closing out the high five. Race number seven was the day's feature event, the Reggae Month Trophy. This was an open allowance event for three year olds and up, covering a distance of five furlongs straight. A small field of seven declared to start, with a double entry each from trainer Gary Sabrati and Carl Anderson. They're off for the Reggae Month Trophy. Desert of Malibu didn't start that well, reared at the start. Madeline Sunshine is running quickly toward the far side as they sort themselves out. Yellowstone is racing in the middle. Sensational move not too far away. A gift from Ben more toward this side. Emperor of the Cats is the one racing right against the stand fence. And Desert of Malibu, the favorite, now begins to get going as they head away now toward the final quarter. Emperor of the Cats under the fence. Desert of Malibu in between horses. A gift from Ben and Yellowstone race toward the center. Sensational move is also running quickly as they've left the quarter pole and now make their way toward the furlong marker. Sensational move in the middle. Emperor of the Cats under the stand fence. Desert of Malibu has more running to do, but Sensational move has them off their legs and is opening up the gap inside the final 16th. It's Sensational move and the devastating Dane Dawkins coming away from them to win the Reggae Month Trophy easily in the end by maybe five. Emperor of the Cats second. Madeline Sunshine is next ahead of Desert of Malibu. Press conference is back in fifth. Reggae Month Trophy goes to Sensational Move, the other Gear Sobrati runner. And I tell you, when I was handicapping this race, I said, ready for a month aboard Delta of Malibu. Dane Dawkins aboard Sensational Move. I actually pointed that out to you preview time. And I looked at it and I saw it and I said, but I don't understand. If Dane Dawkins rode Delta of Malibu to victory five consecutive times. How comes he's on Sensation Move? And Radish Roman, who rode Sensation Move last time to win by 10 lengths, how come he's on Delta of Malibu? And then I went to dig up the records, went as far as telling you that the first time Delta of Malibu raced, she won with Radish Roman in the saddle, replacing Dane Dawkins. Dane Dawkins was down for the day, so we got a chance right there. And what a board Delta of Malibu. And I said, even though it just stared at me in my face, Big like a breadfruit, the change round of riders. I still did uh, take heed and mark sensation move. And sensation move turns out to have won the race at 8 to 1. There's not man who reared at the gate. <laughs> she reared at the gate last time out when coming from last over six furlongs and beat it. Madden Sunshine and Emperor of the Cats. And she raised at the gate today. And I knew if she reared at the gate at five straight, she couldn't recover from that. So sometimes you wonder how you lose. <laughs> and uh, that's the way we lost there. 8 to 1. Upset win for Sensation Move. A bittersweet victory for trainer Gary Sabrati as he takes the day's feature with a win with his lesser of the two charges, Sensational Move, and in doing so breaks the unbeaten run of his talented five year old in Porty, Desert of Malibu. The eighth race on the card was a maiden condition event for native bred four year olds and up, a seven furlongs contest with a 10-horse field sent to face a starter. The sixth draw, Veliki Vicky, the mount of female jockey Samantha Fletcher, was the hot two to one favorite. Ready for a start. They're off and racing, missing the break badly. That is Little Miss Nisha and Finney. Sugar Sugar blast into an early lead as they head toward the six furlong point. It's Sugar Sugar in front, right there too. That's Captain Philip against the rail. Xylophonic Steel is rushing up along with Veliki Vicky and also there that is Blitz Strike. Behind those, that is Atomic Energy. Then comes up Roaring Thunder, Little Miss Nisha and Finney way out of it as they head towards the four furlong point and it's Sugar Sugar in front being tracked by 
Veliki Vicky racing in second. Xylophonic Steel is right there in third, being overtaken by Blitz Strike running the rail. Right against the rail also, that is Captain Philip. Then comes Atomic Energy. Roaring Thunder comes next. Little Miss Nisha and racing at the back of the field. Oh, Plessly, that's Finney. They're going to come into the lane, and Sugar Sugar is traveling sweetly at the moment. At the top of the lane, Sugar Sugar turns with a good-looking lead. Right against the rail, Veliki Vicky. Blitz Strike is right there, too. Xylophonic Steel is also right there. Coming on to that Captain Phillips, but Sugar Sugar still with that lead. Coming to the furlong pole, it's Sugar Sugar in front, but here comes Captain Philip eating up the ground and coming forward. It's Sugar Sugar driven for all you bird, but Captain Philip has now hit the front and Captain Philip begins to go away from Sugar Sugar. It's Captain Philip in front. Sugar Sugar trying hard, but Captain Philip, 199 wins for Chris Mamdeen. He's nearing a milestone. Captain Philip beats Sugar Sugar. Then comes Atomic Energy, Blitz Strike, and uh, Veliki Viki. So the top selection, uh, Captain Philip turns out to be the right choice. And as I said, uh, the speed was going to be there from Sugar Sugar, Xylophonic Steel, Atomic Energy. And uh, it turned out to be just the same. Captain Philip proved to be the strongest at the finish. And what is a decent price too? Three to one. Good ride, Christopher Mandy in four trader, Gary Griffiths and owner, Philip Azar. A good win by jockey Christopher Mandy in aboard the Gary Griffiths condition. Captain Philip, they covered the distance in one minute, 31 and three fifths of a second. Win margin of six clear lengths. The ninth and final was a restricted allowance event going one mile or eight furlongs. An 11 horse field declared to go postward with a wide open field reflecting punter confidence right across the board. And they're off for the ninth. Princess Talisi home alone. They race at the back of the field. Slam Dunk has grabbed an early lead. Brown Skin Girl is ridden out wide to go for that lead. Always right on the premises with Empress Lynx. Tiger Amidat racing out wide. Racing down near the rail and making progress, that's Mr. Wonderful, as they're sorting themselves out on the front end. Slam Dunk, just the leader from Always Right, and Brown Skin Girl, the leader six. Mr. Wonderful now beginning to move upon those leaders. Empress Lynx is racing in behind them, maybe four lengths separates that group. They're followed up by Tiger Amidat and the great crucial Alexia as they flash past the five. Three and a half to four lengths back to the bee's knees. Home Alone now making ground after a poor start. Princess Talisi is next, and at the back of the field, it's a sweet victory. That's the order. A half a mile to run. They go spinning into that turn, and it is Slam Dunk continuing to lead, but Brown Skin Girl accelerates and now hits the front. Brown Skin Girl taking pole position. Slam Dunk fights on, just the neck separates them as they slip past the three. Always right on the drive with Empress Lynx. Tiger Amidat races up next. Home Alone has made good progress as they flash past the 516th. Crucial Alexa and the bee's knees in behind, but Brown Skin Girl brings them into the lane. Slam Dunk is the one down against the rail. Empress Lynx in the red now switching out wide, but Brown Skin Girl responds to Robert Halladine on the left-hand stick. They've opened up four or more. Empress Lynx is chasing. Slam Dunk now begins to fade. Always right, running on the spot to run the rail. Home Alone has more to do, but Brown Skin Girl is skittering away from them. This is the ninth and final. Brown Skin Girl is now eased down. Robert Halladine and Brown Skin Girl come cruising in for Jason Dacosta. They win by six or more. Empress Lynx second. Sweet Victory third. Home Alone is fourth. Tiger Amir that is fifth, always right is sixth. Another well-timed ride by the informed jockey Robert Hardball Halladeen, a top brown skin girl, getting two wins on the day and giving champion trainer Jason Acosta an unfamiliar only win on a race card. Empress Lynx, Sweet Victory, and the Michael Kane trained home alone were the other top four finishers. This has been another edition of the Kimanos Park Highlight Show. See you next time.